empty newsrooms, a signal of protest against Guinea's military junta. Journalists from private outlets imposed a blackout for a day. They say the press, radio and online media are being restricted and censored. From 5 a.m. until now, I'm talking with you, there is no radio being broadcast, at least in FM band. And therefore, TV is 100% down, except Radio Television Guinea, national television. And also, TV is the programs. The programs are down. It's just the music. So for us, it's satisfying. The protest comes after Guinea's ruling military threatened to shut down media that it said undermined national unity. The journalists accused the authorities of closing down two radio stations owned by one group and blocking access to websites and social media that the government denies. If the government sees us as adversaries, a kind of threat, I don't know the execution of which agenda, this could explain why you're asking a question about a possible balance of power between the state and the press. What is obvious is that, for more than three decades, this press has made gains that's not ready to lose, to give up in favor of any leader. Some people in the capital see the blackout as a legitimate response to the wider crackdown on dissent. The press is the fourth power. The press plays an important role in society, as it is the voice of the voiceless. I don't think it's good for the population or the state, because journalists are our sources of information. Guinea's army took power in 2021 after overthrowing President Alpha Conde. It promised a transition to civilian rule by the end of 2024. But the long wait has frustrated the opposition and civil society groups and triggered a wave of protests against the government. The military has since banned protests and detained some opposition leaders and activists. But journalists are hoping their blackout will put pressure on the junta to let them work more freely and restore a greater degree of transparency and democracy to Guinea. Rahila Mohammed, Al Jazeera.